Music's relationship with the political world began violently. Combining the aggressive nature of hip hop music with the pent up frustration of its primarily urban African American artists, rap saw itself spreading a social message via the work of groups like NWA and Public Enemy. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it back because I'm brown. And Elvis was a hero to most, but he never missed. To me, if she's straight out racist, the sucker was simple and plain. I said from the beginning that this music is drug driven, greed driven, and violence driven. Rap music, rap music, gangster rap songs that debase women, degrades the value of life, promotion of drugs and violence, violent pornographic, derogatory lyrics about women and minorities, explicit sexual or violent lyrics, racism and inciting violence, the get rich or die trying attitude that you see in hip hop. Throughout the 2000s, rap music and its relationship to political issues began to receive ridicule, perhaps as a result of its increasingly over-the-top and extravagant subject matter. For example, in 2008, Sean Puffy Combs launched his slightly overdramatic Vote or Die campaign. Puff Daddy? Your friend Kyle told me you don't understand the importance of voting. I... Apparently you haven't heard of my Vote or Die campaign. Vote or die? What the hell does that even mean? What do you think it means, bitch? Ah! Vote or die, motherfucker, motherfucker, vote or die! Rock the vote or else I'm Rapper slash actor Ja Rule, whose music seems to be permanently stuck in the early 2000s, has oddly become a topic of much intrigue for Fox News and much comedic value for the rest of the world. I'm to, to, to balance, you know? Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, have you thought about the 2016 presidential race at all? Who do you like? Um, I like Hillary. Yeah? I like Hillary. I, but, you know, it, it's, it's crazy because, uh, you know, I, I, also, I also think Jeb is a, a good, you know, candidate as well. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a Democrat. So You're a I Democrat? Would, okay. Yeah, that so was I my next vote, question. Yeah, so I would vote Hillary. Yeah. Yeah? All right. Ja Rule, thank you for coming on. Good luck with your new venture. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks to both of you. Thanks for having us. Like, what if there was a CNN camera crew that did a raid at rapper Ja Rule's house? And they saw he had a big plastic vat where he was just suffocating chickens to death. We'd all be like, Ja, you monster, what are you doing? And he'd be like, I'm sorry, I just wanted some eggs. I had to make ethical compromises in order to achieve economies of scale. It's murder. I remember right around September 11th, uh, Ja Rule was on MTV. That's what they said. They said, we got Ja Rule on the phone. Let's see what Ja's thoughts are on this tragedy. Who gives a fuck what Ja Rule thinks at a time like this? Nigga, this is ridiculous. I don't want to dance. I'm scared to death. I want some answers that Ja Rule might not have right now. Thankfully for serious fans of the artistic medium, rap music has begun to see far more mainstream critical acceptance in recent years. In 2015, Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly was considered by many publications as the best album of the year across all genres for both its sonic qualities and its treatment of important social issues. In 2016, rappers YG and Nipsey Hussle released their hit single, Fuck Donald Trump, which expands on the genre's violent past and serves an, as an expression of minority frustration towards Trump's political success. Democrat Bernie Sanders has managed to find his own champion in the hip-hop world in rapper Killer Mike. Despite his violent stage name, Killer Mike has brought a level of restraint and credibility to his endorsement of Sanders that marks a change in rap's typically violent approach towards politics. When you have an opportunity to tell two black girls to shut up and get off stage and you don't, 
and you shake their hand and you smile and you step to the side and you listen. That is a firm difference from turning around and staring at a little black girl and saying, shut up. I'll talk to you later. You're being rude or allowing people to say that to her. I'm going to tell you the proof is um, you kill a chicken or get eggs. You, you take it and share it with other people. We still have chickens in the backyard in Burlington, Vermont. I definitely should take a visit. <laughs> But I say that because although I consider myself a capitalist and I wanted to make money young, there was a certain compassion to it. There was a compassionate capitalism of sorts in which I understood I was a part of a bigger community. So the lady, Miss Ruby, whose yard I used to cut for $25, I cut her front and backyard. When she started paying me less and I complained to my grandmother. YG's political message brings to mind the aggressive style of public enemy and NWA in which he threatens Trump and his supporters. Fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, nigga, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, nigga, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah. I like white folks, but I don't like you. All the niggas in the hood wanna fight you Surprise L Chopper ain't tried to snipe you Surprise the nation of Islam ain't tried to find you Music, particularly rap music, has the ability to bring people together and unify them with a cohesive message. This primary shows us two different approaches to political leaders in the 2016 presidential primaries. Killer Mike's endorsement of Bernie Sanders can be seen as a watershed moment for civic engagement in the hip-hop world. He has been described as an unofficial campaign manager for the Sanders campaign. While YG's music sticks to hip-hop's roots, it calls into question the effectiveness of violence as a means of, of political activism, especially for a genre that has been marred by its violent past. I like white folks, but I don't like you. All the niggas in the hood wanna fight you. Surprise L Chopper ain't tried to snipe you. Surprise the nation of Islam ain't tried to find you. Have a rally out LA, we gon' fuck it up. Home of the ride and the king ride, we don't give a fuck. Black students, checked it from your rally. Well, I'm ready to go right now. Your racist ass did too much.